right, everybody. Hey, it's the Rideshare Reseller here, and uh, we're going to have another video today, and uh, we're going to show you my last 30 days of sales. And also, we're going to discuss about 30 plus items that I sold. So it might be a little long on the video side. I'm going to try and keep it as short as I can and go from there. I want to give you the information for the last 30 days. Uh, I know there's been some people who have discussed that um, eBay has had some issues and they've been affected by them. Uh, I don't think I have. Um, my, you'll see from my sales in the last 30 days, they are up over the previous 30 days. So we'll get started with that. I'm going to save the, the best item for last. So uh, the last item of the video will be the... Um, what I consider my best item that I sold. It was sold today, so uh, it's it's quite it's it's a nice it's a nice sale. So let's get right into it. Let's uh, start with uh, the thirty day total, right? Bingo! There it is. All right. Make it a little bigger. I'll just be on the other side here. Hopefully you can see that. All right. So for the last 30 days, we have a grand total of $12,217.72. Sorry, I'm going to try and fix my chair. Oops. Hold on. That crazy me. It's not focusing. There it is. Sorry about that, guys. A little mess up. All right. $12,217.72. And my sales for the 30 days are up. 27.7% over the last period. Uh, today, well, that that is, um, I believe that was Saturday or Sunday when I when I screen grabbed this. Yeah, somewhere around there. So as of that day, I had $857 in sales for that day. So another good month, uh, a good strong month. Um, I've been right around 10,000. I'm happy with that. Occasionally pushing a little bit higher here and there. Um, I have no idea where this is going to go. I mean, it's been crazy ride to begin with. Many of you know that I started in April of this year, 2019. April 1st was the first time I ever started selling as a reseller. I had sold stuff on eBay prior. And this is the first time that I've ever done this, you know, as far as a string and creating some sort of business model. I'm on pace for a yearly total of, you know, roughly 120,000, maybe up to 140,000 in sales. Um, it's quite amazing how um how I've gotten, you know, that far this fast. And it's been a lot of hard work. I've enjoyed the work, don't get me wrong. Um, a lot of hustle. Um, I'm pushing hard for the first year to see you know, what it takes because, you know, I might want to dial it back. Um, you know, I'm not as young as I used to be, so I have no idea yet. But I do want to kind of keep pushing for that first year all the way through March to really see what I, what, what I can do and if I can keep this up and not kill myself. <laughs> so anyhow, uh, that's a good month, right? Uh, you know, I'm honest. I'm straightforward with you. Here it is. There's the number. The last 90 days, you can see that 30000 There's the $10,000 a month average. Uh, again, I'm going to show you the numbers. I'm not afraid to. I think that everybody can do this, all right? So keep positive, keep fighting, keep uh, keep hustling, and, and you will get there. All right, let's, uh, let's get into the items. We're going to try and go through these fairly rapidly. We'll stop on a few of them. All right, number one. Oh, wait, let me, let me go back here. Hold on. I'm in the wrong position. I need to go to the top. All right, let's go number one. Number one, two hams, uh, bear decanters. Oh, I love hams. I'm not a drinker. I don't drink. But I can remember hams because they were the San Francisco Giants sponsor when I was a kid. And uh, these two bears would always show up on there. Found these at a garage sale, $10 each. And they sold for $129.95. Uh, excellent little purchase. So I paid twenty dollars to make one twenty nine. Um, they sold within a month. So you know this kind of stuff is what you find out there at garage sales, and it was very very cool. All right, next up, a little small, 
Uh, just to show you that I'm not all about you know, the big items, here's a, this is from the airline KLM, and KLM would pass out, I guess, these little house, decorative houses that were full of, I think, whiskey. Don't get me wrong, it could be wrong, but I think it's whiskey. This one is sealed with the whiskey still in it. I paid a buck or so at a garage sale, $23.00. 95 cents with the buyer paying six dollars and 95 cents so a great little find uh, there's a whole series of these um, some are worth more and some are worth less and a uh, great little find all right um, another garage sale find and this one here is mother of pearl capses shell six oval placemat set napkin ring and coaster this was nicely wrapped. I bought a Tommy Hilfiger wallet and this for $10. $8 for this and I got the wallet for two bucks. Again, now this item here I sold for 65. I had, an, uh, I had it up for 75. Took 65 and the reason I took 65 is this person was from California. So the shipping I knew was gonna drop to about $10 and it did. So I made up my $10 difference on the shipping. That's how I roll. Uh, sometimes I get burned three or four bucks in the shipping. Sometimes I make five or six bucks. It all evens out at the end. So $65 and $20 shipping, that's what the buyer paid for this particular item. All right, we're going to buzz through some. All right, well, some of these we've got to stop and talk about. All right, guys, this was one of my most recent finds. Amazing find. In a Goodwill, and it had been slow in this particular Goodwill for about a week to 10 days. New management in that store, so things were suffering a little bit. And this is 12 Clairol Professional 7th Stage Cream Hair Lightener. Funny thing about this is I thought I had six bottles. Three and three, if you look in the picture, you can kind of see that. Opening the box, there were six in each box. Now I'm like, this is money. There were three comps of over $290 sold comps. So now I knew that, that I had something. So I put it up for $285.95 and I sold it. A week later, I'm back at the same Goodwill and what do I find? One more box of six. And I have that up, I think, for $150 or $160. And that's about what I'll get for that. So the crazy thing about these guys, $349 each box. Seven dollars total. I go back a week later, and I guess they got wise to it. Four ninety nine. <laughs> Big deal, right? No consistency. There is no consistency at these stores. One day they're pricing something higher, the next day something lower. Different price peep, different price workers. So it's hit or miss. That's why you know sometimes you find some great stuff, and then you shake your head at why some stuff is so overpriced. Look for this stuff, guys. Food pet stuff, brand new, all of that kind of stuff. Uh, great finds and quick flips and make great money. All right, I found this one at a Goodwill. This is an all-clad three-quart saucepan with lid. Excellent shape. I mean, it is brand new like, but it was used, but it's, man, it's just a pristine shape. And there's another pan that I bought. I paid about $7 for each pan, including the lid. This one sold for $53. Again, got lucky here. This was a California buyer down in LA. So the shipping is about a push. So $53 off of about a $7 investment. All right, up next. This is great. These are the ones I love to find. Um, my son-in-law and me kind of go round and round. He does really well with these two. He's now um, doing the thrifting and he's doing really well with it. And uh, this particular item is a Panasonic DMR EZ48 DVD recorder and VHS player. Key here is it records DVDs. And um, this was a $7.99, $7.99 find at Savers. Uh, tested it out at Savers and tested it further at home. It does work. There's just no remote. Uh, I love finding these guys. Uh, you will find them at anywhere from the sellable price from $60 to $200, depending on which ones you find. If you're lucky to find one in a box, you can even get into the $400 range. 
So keep an eye out for those guys. All right, up next, uh, clothing. Uh, many of you know that I've talked about it. I do not specialize in clothing, so I look for the unique, the new, the pristine, and so forth. This one here I paid about $20 for, uh, and it's a Burton Dry Ride hooded winter ski snowboard coat. It's beautiful. It was really nice. The buyer is going to love this. I just shipped it, so he's going he's gonna to really get a kick out of this. Excellent piece, $69.50, $9.95 for shipping. As with clothes, I'm more of a shoe guy now. I'm more pushing towards shoes. Uh, I have a lot of shoes, a lot of new shoes, and, and I've been doing pretty, I'm doing better with those. I'm learning a lot more about those. Clothing though, mm, I heard there was just a lot of saturation on eBay with that. So I'm sticking, I'm just kind of shying away from that. I don't spend hardly any time in the clothing racks. All right, next up is a um, large print, basically, keyboard. And I paid $4.99 at Savers for this item. And it sold for $28.95. Most of their keyboards are all $4.99 to $6.99. Uh, no rhyme or reason why they price them uh, that way, but they do. So sometimes I'll, they're in the electronics. If it looks cool, I'm going to look it up. All right, this was an early buy of mine. It was really cool. It had comps when I bought it. It is um, wire and things. It's, it's basically, if you guys think of the spirograph, think of this as the metal spirograph. This is metal wire that you create, and this happens to be a motorcycle. And, you know, people create these this kind of on a velvet background it's it's the 70s you know this one's brand new in the box i remember exactly what i paid for it you're gonna laugh dollar 99 buck 99 i sat on it for three months it didn't sell finally it sold probably someone's gonna get a christmas gift out of this so look for this old stuff you know sometimes you gotta sit on it but it, hey if you're gonna make good money on it why not uh, all right, just to show you again that I don't just always sell expensive items. These were earplugs. There was a box. The box was open. The box said there were 200 pairs. I had no idea how many were in it, but the box was like $349, so I took the box, and I broke down the box into two piles. One was 60 and one is 57 so 60 pair. Uh, I sold it for $10.90 plus free shipping. The other one's selling for right around the same price. So I'll make $20 worth of sale for my $3.49 investment. Not a killer, but I just want to prove to myself I could sell something like this. So seven, eight bucks, probably bottom line. Not bad. All right, this is why you bundle at garage sales, right? You hear this all the time. Maybe you can't get them to lower the price, but you can get them to give you something. And this is Inga's Christmas ornaments. I bought this when I bought the lacrosse helmet and the football helmet. If you saw those videos, you saw that I paid $40 for the lacrosse helmet and $20 for the football helmet. This was at that same garage sale. So I said, hey, if I buy the two helmets at your price, full price, he wouldn't budge. Will you give me the ornaments? And he threw in the ornaments. The ornaments got me 50 bucks. Nearly got me all my money back on the two helmets right there, $49.95. Buyer paid $12.95 shipping. These classic ornaments do really well. Uh, I know that the Commonwealth Picker, he does really well with them. I think that you find a lot more of these stuff back east. I just don't find a lot of this out here on the West Coast. Seems to be a little bit different, you know, culture out here versus out there. It just seems to work out that way. But... Christmas ornaments, uh, especially vintage ones, are really, really good. All right, another early buy from me in my reselling day. Uh, this is a ostrich egg that's cut out. It's by a company called Ryder and Smart, 1930s. It's a decorative egg. You know, this was where my eyes kind of got wide. It looked like it was worth more than what it really was. 
I paid two, there were two eggs. I paid, I think, $7.45 or $7.95 for each egg. So I didn't make a killing off this one particular egg. It sold it for $35 and $9.95 shipping. Now it's a live and learn. I'm learning. So this was a purchase of about probably three months ago. And the first one is finally sold. So I pretty much have gotten my money back now. The next egg, which is about the same price, maybe a little bit more. It's a little more decorative, kind of a cooler egg. Uh, at least I think so. Hopefully I'll get a little bit more money for that. That bet you it'll sell before around Christmas time. So I should be able to get rid of that one. All right, next up. All right, another early buy. This one here is a Ferrari jacket. And the story behind the Ferrari jacket, I was in Savers checking out. And they happened to wheel one of those clothing racks by me, and I saw this coat. It was just coming in out from the back room. And I grabbed it. And the price tag was 75 bucks. So I wasn't positive. I was in line. Excuse me, I'm going to drink of water. I was in line, and I had to make a quick decision. But it was senior day, so I knew I got 30% off. So it was like 50 some dollars, 52 53 dollars. So I, I, I just went for it. I got it. It sat for the longest time. I had a lot of watchers. And it finally sold for $149.95 plus $20 shipping. So, you know, about probably a net $60 profit. Still, not bad. I did tie up $50 of my money for three months. But it, again, you know, I'm still learning, right? That was early on. That was probably two months in, two and a half months into me just selling. You know, and uh, it looked cool. Just took a little while to sell. All right, this is fun. These, these are the, I live for these now. I live for these kind of items. Something so simple. Look at this. Remington Triple Action Electric Shaver. I don't know how old this is. Probably back in the 70s maybe. Not, I guess in that range. And it's brand new. That was the key factor here. But this is also another factor. The people at Goodwill in the back room have no clue what they've got. They just think it's old. It's an old razor, you know, electric shaver. So they just throw a price on it. $5, four ninety nine, because that's what I paid. Funny thing is, it's got the two original. If you take a look at those little blue coupons, those are original 25 cent off Aqua Velva. So that's probably a 70s razor. And uh, all the warranty card, everything in it. And uh, there were comps of some used ones, believe it or not, for 30 bucks roughly. But I had it new, you know, never used. So that's a big plus, especially on a razor. So I got $59.95 and $9 and $8.95 for shipping. I love this kind of stuff, guys. All right, another... Another buy, I uh, bought this in the, you know, early on. This one was sitting around the Goodwill for three days. I had noticed it for three days, and finally I, it wasn't very busy that day in the Goodwill, I wasn't, so I, I decided to look this thing up. Again, this is because I'm, I'm, I was new. You know, I just had no idea. Heather Goldmick, Night Before Christmas, a Snowman, and a lot of people during the summer, they're just not looking for Christmas items. Sitting on an end cap. And paid six dollars and ninety five cents for it. It sold for one fifty nine ninety five and forty dollars shipping. Fantastic sell. I had sixteen watchers on this. There was no need for me to attempt to offer them any money off. I had sixteen watchers. I knew it was going to sell for full price, and Christmas was coming up, and and I was right. It did. It finally sold. A little tricky to package, but hey, it was worth it. All right, another airplane, guys. If anybody saw my airplane video, you know that I bought 16 of them at $20 each. This is another one that is sold for $199 plus $34.95 shipping. I had a guy that was bugging me for three weeks trying to buy this for $159. He just wouldn't go any higher. I told him it was worth $199. It's brand new in the box. I said, I'm going to sell it. I told him if I didn't sell it within a month or so that I'd you know, offer him back. Well, I didn't have to. It sold for $1.99 like I thought. So $1.99 plus $34.95 shipping. All right, going back now, here's the shoes, right? Here's, here's what I'm talking about. 
So I'm getting pretty good at it. I'm getting better at it. These are Kohan. Kohan, certain Kohans are really good sellers. Certain Kohans are dogs. And you just know. It's just like a tennis racket, like I explained to you. Just like golf clubs. Just like certain things. When you pick them up, you know that they're nice. Pick these shoes up extremely light. The soles are really kind of different. So you know you kind of got something. This came fresh out of my new Goodwill. It just opened up. I paid $9.95 for these. 13M Zero Grand Wingtip British Tan. They sold for $74.95. And I paid the shipping. That's the kind of shoe I like to find. Alright. Yeah, I make mistakes. Just like everybody else. And here's one of them. So I told you I'm going to be straight up and show you the mistakes too. I'm not going to sit there and just show you all the goody goody stuff. Garage sale. Um, and you know I should know better. I like photography. I know photography. Knew the camera was worth something. It was worth anywhere from 65 to 85 working condition. I checked it out, opened the battery pack. Battery didn't look corroded. Shut it down. Got home. Took out the batteries and realized that it was missing one of the copper ends, the little ends for the battery. So I was kind of sunk. I didn't want to do anything with that. So I paid $5 for it, so I put it up for parts only. I mentioned that the problem was this. I sold it for $20 and $7.95. So I made a little profit. I didn't make nearly as much as I did. But again, I should have been better at checking the battery compartment a little more thorough. You're going to learn these. You're going to have these mistakes. They're going to happen. Uh, it didn't kill me. All right. Here's another good little find. Back to back days, I found this glove and it's this. I found this glove and its little brother. The little brother is actually worth a little bit more. The big one, this one here is a Wilson A2000 XXL. Believe it or not, five forty nine for this one. The other one that I found was seven forty nine. The other one is the two thousand XL. Sold that for one hundred fifteen dollars. This one sold for ninety nine ninety five. I found them in back to back days at two different Goodwills. Amazing. I mean, I just think again that Goodwill, when it comes to gloves, tennis rackets, golf clubs, they have set prices. Records too. I mean, they're not gonna. It, you know how hard it is to fish through records. It's impossible. It's just it takes forever, unless you find the Beatles' White Album. So they just put these prices on them. This is where you're gonna find a lot of good value, especially if you just keep looking, because they're just gonna slap that price tag on it. It could be a hundred, hundred fifty dollar item, and that's what they're gonna do. Same thing with art. Uh, they do the same thing. If they don't know what it is, it's just gonna be a standard pricing operation. And a lot of these people who are pricing in the back rooms are, I don't want, I'm not going to say they're, they're just not knowledgeable enough or don't care, you know, that kind of thing. All right, here we go. Next item. All right, a U.S. flag that was flown over the Capitol. You can buy these, I suppose, somewhere, maybe in the Capitol store or something like that. This one was uh, flown for Senator Dianne Feinstein or issued for her and flown over the Capitol and there's always will tell you what date it was flown over They probably fly 10 up to pull them up down up down But I paid 695 for this one sold it for 4995 plus 995 shipping I had another one that was flown over Kandar Afghanistan that sold for about the same price um, Weird that I found these like within a week of each other All right Let's head to the next item. All right, here's another golf club. This is a golf club. Um, this is a unique one. Um, this is a Bobby Jones by Jesse Ortiz. Jesse Ortiz in the golf world is a golf fitter, a golf make, club maker. Fairly famous. Uh, it doesn't mean they're going to sell for a ton of money, but if you get them for $3 and you can flip them for $27.99 and $15.95 shipping, you make some money. Occasionally, you're going to run into Odyssey putters, which I have run into, Scotty Cameron putters. If you run into a Scotty Cameron, Scotty Cameron putter, you're probably going to you know, get a minimum of $100, possibly more. 
Scotty Pam Cameron putters are free to four hundred dollars, brand new. You know, head covers help, all that kind of stuff. This one I sold for twenty seven ninety nine. So keep your eye out for them, and they're not hard to ship. They're they're pretty simple. If you get the triangular tube from the United States Postal Service, uh, irons and putters fit in one tube. Uh, these kind of woods fit in a double tube where you just kind of cut it to fit the size. You'll pay no more than fifteen ninety five to twenty dollars to ship them. All right, here you go, guys. This is what I'm talking about. Now we're getting into some. Very big money items and some items here. All right. Wilson Tennis Racket. Remember what I told you. If you live in Arizona, you live in Florida, you live in Palm Springs, you live in places where the weather is fantastic, especially during the winter months, start looking for these. You're going to see these pop up. If you go in every day to a Goodwill or to a Savers or something, you will find these items all the time. And again, they don't know how to price them. Seven ninety five is probably the average price they charge for a tennis racket at Goodwill. That's what I paid for this tennis racket. Look what I sold it for. Two ninety nine ninety five plus. He paid twenty dollars shipping. There was offer was up there. If they wanted to offer me money, I probably would have taken it. But nope, he bought it straight away. Straight away. You just know when you have a tennis racket. Like I said, you will touch it, feel it, you'll know. And there it was. So, really good find. All right, this is a big shout out to my friend, the Commonwealth Picker. I told him one of these days I'm going to find a salad, Super Shooter. One day I found a Super Shooter, but was missing those. Missing the, um, the little metal disc. Or missing four of them or something. Drove me crazy. You know, trying to, trying to sell one for him, basically. So anyhow, here's the super shooter. I find one, and I'm missing one piece. I'm missing the decorative tip. And I'm, I texted him. I said, hey, I'm going to go for it. It was $2.99 at Savers. I was just wanted to sell it. And I got $20 plus $7.95 shipping. So I do have a super shooter under my belt. Now i got to find more. All right, another very interesting uh, piece. And... You know, once you become more knowledgeable and you start to have a bankroll or you feel like you have a bankroll that you can kind of, you know, take a shot at something, this is what I took a shot at. This thing was $20. Didn't know if it was metal, ceramic, marble. Pretty much knew it wasn't marble, I should say. But when I tapped on it, it sounded like metal. But when I scratched on the bottom, it just didn't say metal. So I kind of disclosed. I did disclose that in the... Um, uh, the item description. It had a 1968 scratched on the bottom. Not in printed, but scratched. It's 17 tall, 6 wide. I already got positive feedback, so you know I sold it. I sold it for $129.95 plus $32.95 shipping. Just love the item. Um, again, you know, big item. You have to store it. I had no idea, but it sold within about 10 days. So, you know, a great, great little find. All right, part of my Morris code find in a, a chess set that I had, some chess pieces. This is a, a Morris code key trainer. I sold the better one for $95. This one just sold for $30, and I paid $10 for the both of them. $30 and $12.95 shipping. So a Morris code key trainer. All right, this is just another fantastic one. This guy here is was bundled six of them in a pack, wrapped with tape, four forty nine at Goodwill. New Scotch Fur Fighter, eight refill sheets, upholstery pet hair remover. So the first guy bought one for twenty one ninety five, and the next guy bought five of them at twenty one ninety five. I be, that's roughly what it was at around that price range. And he paid $109.75 for five of them. So off of this sale of $4.65, I made $130. So, again, this stuff's out there. You just got to keep looking. All right, more golf stuff. 
Paid five ninety five for a dozen Pro V ones. Anybody out there who plays the game knows that brand new Pro V ones in the store are forty nine dollars, pretty much forty nine across the board. The reason these were a little more special was these had uh, the U.S. Open Marion two thousand thirteen logo on them. Forty four ninety five plus ten dollars shipping. So this man paid fifty five dollars for these golf balls, right around the market price. I didn't care. Um, the logo is what I was going to sell it for. If these were Pro V's, I probably online would have maybe got $39. So that's what I probably would have got. The logo, I got a little bit extra. All right, another older sale of mine. And that's another thing I'm finding out that, you know, you're going to sell, you know, eventually it's like, I remember my business that we used to have a saying that everything eventually sold. It had a price and a buyer. You just had to find them. It might take longer. So you're, you know, you can't, when you open a store or anything, you're not going to sell every single item every day. It just doesn't work that way. You're trying to do your best due diligence in guessing as to what is going to sell. Sometimes you hit a home run and you get a line that just moves and moves and moves. And then you get the dogs. Well, you can always cut your cut your losses and get your money back. That's generally what you do. Or, you know, it, it starts to sell. This item here, I paid ten dollars for it. I really liked the item when I bought it. It just it just didn't sell. Finally it did. So this is a Bobby three or four month old item early on. Bought it at a church garage sale. I have two of them. I paid ten dollars each. So I got my money back and made some profit. And the next one that sells, I'm gonna make, you know, a full amount of profit. $80 and the buyer paid $25.95. It's one of those radio arms for a computer monitor so you can move it around. All right, we're going to keep cooking here. All right, some bounce. Bounce, wrinkle guard. Keyword here, unscented. This is why I got them. A lot of people don't like the scented stuff. They're allergic, allergies, so forth and so on. Bought these at Goodwill for $2.99. I had six boxes. I now have three. I've sold three at $22 each. So, you know, I'm, I've got my money back and, and eventually, you know, I'll get it. I'll make good profit. All right, some more shoes. These are my vans. This comes from my Honey Hole thrift store. They always sell me vans at $10 a pop. All brand new every time I buy them from them. And these are brand new. I sold them for $39.98 and I paid the shipping. So I'll make about a $20 bill probably uh, when it's all said and done. All right, another tremendous little find. Goodwill find. If you go to the Goodwills around me, I don't know how it is around you guys. But the artwork is usually hanging on the wall in the back. I immediately spotted this item. I knew what it was. And when I looked at the price, I knew that they didn't know what it was. That's how it works again, like I talked about. Uh, the thing here is you've got to know that it's called marquetry. That's where they take pieces of wood and create a scene. So they might use paducah here, ironwood here, pine here, oak here, cherry here, and they create this piece. This is from the Hudson River area, which is the most famous area for this. I think parts of Ohio too have it some of that too so anyhow uh, $9.95 for this item I had it up for $2.99 got an offer of $2.50 plus $40 shipping and I took it um, I had sold one prior and again it's called Marquetry so when you see this look on the back there will usually be a sticker it tells you what each piece of wood is each part of the scene is made of so like the tree is X wood the leaf is this the deer is this so look for this. This There's big money in some of these, especially the bigger ones. That's what you want. This was the bigger one. All right. Hey, another hair care product. Look at this thing, huh? This is amazing to me. Um, I always see curling irons at every Goodwill, every Sabres I go to. You know, piles of them. Well, this one was in a box, and... Um, so I picked it up, ran the comp on it, and I was surprised to see that brand new, they're like 200. Used ones were all over the place. Um, this one worked just fine. Brand new, 
$119.95 was what I got, and the buyer paid $9.95 shipping. So keep your eye out for this stuff. Wow, was I shocked. And it sold fast, sold within one week. So look for these straightener ceramic brush. All right, uh, some fishing line. Again, about six bucks, I think, five ninety nine. Four packs of trialine, and I sold it for twenty nine ninety five. Same kind of situation, uh, bundled together, wrapped up in tape, and uh, knew I would at least make twenty bucks, you know, on that thing. So you know, that kind of kind of deal. All right, many of you who who saw my um, reel to reel tape deck that I sold. And I told you that there were two reels, reel one and reel two. Um, I debated to put one and two up, but then I thought about it. I thought some people have maybe one of the two reels, you know, because you see there's one. So the, I'm pretty sure the guy who bought this probably has reel number two. Sold it for $49.95. Uh, the other one will sell for $49.95 also. So an additional $100. So I just didn't put those reels on top of that reel to reel. You know, I would have been like giving the guy $100 because he could have flipped those and said, I don't care about those, whatever, right? So you've got to look to make sure, you know, if you see these reel to reels, um, the reels can be worth some money too. So you split those out. All right, two more items. We're almost done, guys. All right, here we go. Another garage sale find, which was this was where I bought, uh, bought with the Hams uh, Beer Steins. Uh, $10 for this chess set. When I bought it, I afterwards I was having buyer's remorse a little bit. I thought, oh man, this might not be that great. And I got $49.95 out of it, and pit buyer paid $20 shipping. So I, I was happy, and it sold fairly rapidly. It was in good shape. Problem with these, you got to wrap each piece individually, so it's kind of a drag as far as that goes. Um, but uh, some of these chess sets, if you can find them, some of them are pretty pretty expensive. So keep your eye out for those. All right, we've come to the last item, the best item of the day. I sold it today, so you're watching the video, obviously. So I threw it in here real quick. If you watch my Audrey Hepburn, My Fair Lady video, this is what, what the item is. All right, here we go. I was in a savers, and I found this program back in the day in the 60s and so forth when they had a movie premiere and if it was a big one they would hand out programs which were mini books of the actors and the directors and producers kind of their bios and everything and they gave them to the patrons who the, the people who came to see the movie premiere the Crommons Chinese theater that kind of thing so I opened up the book and in the front cover there was a signature and it's Audrey Hepburn so I started to look, do a little bit more investigating. I noticed that other books that were on the programs themselves were for sale on eBay. Not a whole lot, maybe $20, $30, $40. But when you opened it, when they showed that page, there was no signature. So that eliminated the auto pen to me, where they just signed every program auto pen wise and handed them out to people. So I thought, you know, somehow this person or whoever had this got the signature of Audrey Hepburn. No idea what, how or why, but I have an idea that the person, the people who donated this book to Savers didn't know it was in there, meaning it was probably a relative, or, uh, you know, mom or dad. Maybe they've passed away, something like that, and the collection was just given to the store and nobody noticed, and I just happened to open it up. Curiosity, right? That's what I tell you. Always be curious. You never know. You know, of all the books in that store, I opened that book, right? I don't know what to tell you. I paid a dollar ninety nine for the book, and it sold for four hundred and fifty dollars and nineteen dollars shipping, and the guy was very very happy. So, anyhow, uh, keep your eyes open, people. There are some amazing finds out there. It's a lot of fun. I've had a uh, a ton of fun, um, you know, doing this. Um, we'll see how I can how much more I can do as far as. Uh, as far as the pushing it, you know, I'm going to push it all the way to April because I want to see how much I can do in a year. I know April and May were pretty light because I was just starting out. 
but my goal right now is to tap close to uh, that 100 to 120,000 mark with those two months being a little bit slow. So we will see. And I'll show you two items in the background that you're probably, maybe you're asking about. Two, well, three amazing finds because this these um, little, I can't point to them. Look at this. There they are, right there. Those two little pictures in the background next to the chair. Those I found today. I paid $8.49 each. They are like, I don't know if they're lithographs or etching type things, but they're numbered, you know. 400 out of 950 it's a jewish artist and uh, they will go for between 150 and 175 dollars and there's comps so i'm going to sell them for that the little red thing in the lower left corner that's a crazy find a week and a half ago i normally do not work saturdays meaning go into thrift stores and i happened to be going into a safeway because i needed some stuff and the Safeway store is right next to the Savers. So I went into the Savers and up top on the top shelf in the coffee maker area was that. And that's a Bugatti, yep, like the car, the Bugatti espresso machine. They sell on Amazon for about $850, brand new. That little item right there had a price tag of $9.99 on it sitting on the top shelf stuck out like a sore thumb i had just been pushing my cart down my eyes are looking i'm fairly tall uh so my eyes are at the upper level generally speaking and there it was i immediately put it in my cart i didn't even need to if it was thirty dollars forty dollars i was going to pay it i was stunned that it was 9.99 stunned i mean when I got to the register, the lady there was like, you gave me a high five. She gave me a high five. <laughs> yep. She said, unbelievable. I said, I said, how do they price this stuff? She says she has no idea how they do it back there. But that's what I'm talking about, people. Hunt these things down. They're out there. The more stores you hit, the more luck you make. You know, there's an old saying, you make your own luck. And that's what you got to do. You just got to pound the pavement and just trust yourself that, hey, things are going to hit you. All right, guys. Hey, thanks for watching. I know it's a little longer video, but again, keep uh, keep the feet moving, and you're going to find some great items. I will talk to you next time. Thanks, guys.